Point of View is brought to you in association with Stambic Bank. Moving forward. This is The Point of View. Welcome to another edition. The Point of View is your number one current affairs show on television. We get you the right guests. We ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. It's an interactive show where you can contribute to the discussion in a number of ways. If you're watching and there's something that you want to comment on, our WhatsApp number is on the screen. You can send your views. Also, if you're watching on Facebook, there's a live stream you can comment on. And of course, your hashtag for those of you on Twitter is Point of View. My name is Bernard Avle. We have a big, big show for you tonight because... A few moments before we came on air, we got the story from Takradi that the police have indeed confirmed that the uh, bodies that were exhumed and DNA tests performed on turned out to be those of the four Takradi girls. It's a big, big story in Takradi. We'll bring you some quick, quick reaction to that story. But our main program today is focused on a chaotic school placement process. In fact, tens of thousands of parents converge on the Independence Square in Accra to try and get placement for the awards. I've invited the man at the GS who I can say is in charge. He's the Director General Deputy in charge of access and quality to address issues. When we come back, I'll tell you more about tonight's show. Stay with us. So welcome to the show. So tonight, we really want you to tell us what's going on with school placement. My guest is K.B. Tando. He is the Deputy Director General of the Ghana Education Service in charge of access and quality. So if you're not getting access, it's this guy's fault. K.B., we welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you very much. Good evening, Bernard, and good evening to your uh, viewers. Viewers, yes. yes. You need to correct yourself. A lot of people think I'm just on radio. I'm on TV as well. Yes. So tonight, we will uh, hear from you, parents. Let's know what's really going on with the school placement. We'll bring you reports from the Independence Square, and Mr. Tando will address all your questions. In fact, whilst we are on air, if you have specific concerns about the school placement, we'll go live to the placement portal to see what's going on there, and you can put your questions to us, either via the WhatsApp number on the screen, or even possibly by phoning if I'm able to get the technology right. But before we get into that particular issue, before we came on air, the IGP addressed a brief uh, press conference where he said that the bodies of the four uh, young women exhumed at the home of the main suspect have turned out to be those of the girls who had been feared kidnapped. Here's a quick uh, video clip of the IGP speaking to the press earlier today. A few minutes ago, officers of the Ghana Police Service informed four families in Takradi, in the western region of Ghana, that DNA tests conducted on some human remains discovered in the course of police investigations into the disappearance of four missing girls had turned positive as the remains of the girls. The Ghana Police Service has, with regret, therefore informed the families that the remains are those of Ruth Abaka, Prisla Blessing Bintum, Ruth Love Quezen, and Prisla Crunchy. Investigations now established that the girls were victims of a serial kidnapping and murdering syndicate that operated in the Takradi area. While for various reasons we are unsuccessful in obtaining and acting on accurate, actionable intelligence in good time to enable us to rescue the girls, we believe that the arrest of the corporates has effectively thwarted the ability of this syndicate to have to have continued with further kidnappings and murders. So the very grim revelation from Mr. Bueno that the worst fears of most of the people concerned about this story have come true. Well, our correspondent who's been on this story uh, took the reaction, the immediate reactions of the family in Takradi, and here are some of the family members. Hey, 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 
We apologize for the quality of that video, but as you would imagine, this uh, report came in a few moments ago, so we captured this in the dark. It's a really troubling story, and we'll later on cross over and get uh, some reactions to this from the security service. But let's let's go to the Independence Square now. I'm going to show you footage from, from one, indeed, from the whole of last week. It's been chaotic, but today was quite the scene because it appeared that almost all concerned parents and wards um, made a beeline for the Independence Square. And Zoe Abu Beidou and Anatu Fobwating, who presented CNR a few moments ago, where I'm going to bring you a quick report from the Independence Square about the chaos that has characterized the school placement process. Last week, we brought you a story about the frustration of parents and students following the placement last week. Now, today, we've come back, and the numbers here are so large. Thousands of parents and students have come here, some coming from the Volta region, some coming from the northern region, some even coming from the eastern region to get their issues resolved because they tell me that the various centers there are not attending to their issues. Now today we'll be speaking to the, some parents and some students as well and try and get an official response from the officials here who have converged on the Independence Square to ensure that every student who has passed the BEC gets placed and issues resolved. So we're here again at the Independence Square and today the numbers are more than what we encountered here last week. I have with me here a parent and his ward and they have a peculiar issue. I'll let him introduce himself and tell us what his issues are and if he has made any move at all um, prior to today. Hello sir, thank you for joining us on the City Newsroom. What's your name? My name is Robert okay. and uh, this is my son. Uh, she got an uh, admission at the uh, Adisado College at his first choice. But we went to the school at Kikus. And we went there, they said the name is not there. Uh, wh when was this? Uh, we went there on Thursday. Is it not Thursday? Thursday. And uh, they said the name is not there. What explanation did they give to you? In fact, the headmaster is a very good man. He told me the problem is not from him. The name he got on the computer is, the, is what is, uh, is on the, yes, printed out. So we want to watch at the, uh, what do you call it, uh, notice board, and the name of my son is not there. So I went to the headmaster, and he told me I should come back to Accra, to Wayek. Uh, to verify it because he heard something on the news at that morning that everybody who got any problem should come to Independence Square. So we came here on Friday. We got here almost 5 o'clock and the number they gave us almost 536. So you were the five, over 500 um, uh, 36. Uh, 36 person yes. that reported on Friday. Yes. And today what's your number? 
Today I didn't got any number, but we came here so early. But what they told us, uh, our problem is not included. They, they didn't mention our problem. The announcer told me this problem, I should go and solve it myself. And it's, I don't know. Okay. Why should I solve the problem by myself? So I'm here with Elvis. Um, we spoke to him last week and he had to come back today, being Monday, because that was the communication that was uh, given him. So he's here again. He came with his father all the way from the central region and we'll be speaking to him based on the numbers you are seeing here if he's actually been able to maneuver his way to the front to speak to officials and what they have been saying to him. Elvis, thank you for joining us once again. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Okay. Elvis, what time did you come here today? I came around 2 o'clock a.m. at dawn. Mm. And what has been going on from dawn till now for you? Well, they have just been tossing us all, all around. Go here, come here, go here, come here, form a queue, and the queue is not even working. Since morning, where, where I'm standing, I'm just, I'm still standing there, I'm not even moving. Mm. And now they've asked us to go, to go back and sit down until they, they tell us to come back. So I'm just waiting. So what um, have you heard from the authorities? I hear they've made some announcements. What, what did they say? Well, they told us that we should go and sit down. And sit go where? Over there. Over there. Under one of the sheds? Yes, so that they'll call us, then we come. But it seems like nothing is going on. So it looks like your situation is not being resolved? No, no, it's not even being resolved. It's not even, like, they've not even called me. Mm. That I'll get even the chance to tell them my problem. Mm. They've not even called me, so I'm just standing in the queue. Okay. All right. So are you going to wait or you are going back and come when the numbers are a bit lower? Well, right now, how the things are going, I think I have to go home and come back tomorrow because the queue is huge enough that even when you stand in, people just come in, hey, go, 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 don't be pushing you. So I don't have that kind of strength to stand in the queue, so mm -hmm. I just have to go home. All right, thank you so much, Elvis. And that was Elvis. Um, we'll be speaking to some more parents to find out what the issues are, as well as students. Do stay with us. This is the City Newsroom. So, one official is so that was an excerpt of uh, some of the issues. We'll bring you more later. So, KB Tando, Kwabna B Tando, or Bintum Tando, is the Deputy Director General of Ghana Education Service in charge of quality and access. Kwabna, welcome to the show again. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, very distressing scenes from the Independence Square. My reporter says there were people in the tens of thousands. I mean, what's your general reaction to what's going on before we get into the details of the explanation? Well, um, the first thing I would like to say is that it is... Um, there, are, there are two ways to look at this. Number one is that the people that are there are interested in education mm. because if they were not interested in education they would not travel from near and far mm -hmm. you know to come to the independent square in an effort to uh, try to get schools for their children or better schools for their children and number two it is also because for the most part people that are the independent square 90 percent of them already have schools are you serious yes and and i, I will show you they already have schools. They already have schools. And so most people there, what I would say is that they are shopping for better schools. They are shopping for better schools. Yes. In their own heads, they are shopping for better the schools. The people there are not people who have not failed to be placed. No. They've been placed but don't like the schools they've been given. Yes. Our data indicates, based on all of the data we have collected and the Independence Square so far, that almost everybody that has come, 8 to 9 out of 10, already have schools. But if you have a school that you can, for practical purposes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, go to, so for example, somebody lives in Kasoa and they've been given a school in Dodoa mm -hmm. as a day student, mm -hmm. would you consider that to be part of the 90%? Yes. And, and the reason why I consider that to be part of the 90% is because our system is such that mm -hmm. no one is put into a school that mm -hmm. they did not choose. Okay. No one is put into a program that they did not choose and no one is put into a residential status that they did not choose. 
I would like to give you some statistics just so we can have a better understanding. And I, I, tr I try to show it on the screen. I've done some data capture, and then I would also go to our live screen in terms of the placement screen. So you, you're yeah. able to show me what is happening on the platform? On, on, the, on the placement platform. I have logged in with my own account, and I'm going to show you what is happening. This is the back end of the platform. It is the back end in terms of the management side of the platform, just to show that placement is happening. Most people have schools. Okay. And so what do you want to show me first? What I want to show you now is just statistics. I think it's important for us to start the conversation from there. Mm -hmm. For 2019, there are 721 senior high schools that are available mm -hmm. for placement. Mm -hmm. Out of these 721 senior high schools, the combined vacancy declarations for these schools are 520,298. Now, we want to look at the number of students that YX submitted total and complete results for. Mm -hmm. That is 512,083. This is quite exciting because a, a great number of people are accessing BECE and for that matter, pushing at the doors to access senior education. So there are, more, there are more vacancies than complete results. Than complete results. Really? So even from this... By if, about 8,000. Yes, please. So even from this, if all 512,000 had passed or had qualified, all of them will have spaces. Now, out of the 512,000 that YA gave to us, the disqualified people are 38,355. Those are students who either got a nine in English or a nine in mathematics or a combination of both, which means the total number of qualified students in this country to be placed in senior high schools are 473,728. Out of this, then we go into the CSSPS placement system. Once we run the placement, the 473,728 are ranked from in order of merit. Once they are ranked in order of merit, then we begin to look at their choices. Mm -hmm. Their choice of school, their choice of program, and their choice of residency. And then we start the placement. And so all these students, when we did the placement, then you see the next figure down is the auto-placed. That is based on all of the vacancies available, match against choices, match against competition, 351,022 students got into their schools. But those are the only vacancies they consumed. But all of our vacancies are 520,000 plus, which means we still had about um, 167,000. So if you say they, they are auto placed, it means that based on the choices they gave, if they didn't get choice A, you would have given them a choice B or a choice C. But essentially, they, to fight they were placed choice. on the basis of their choices. Yes, and on the basis of men. And that's 351,000 out of 473,000. Yes. Good. Which left 122,706 to be put on a system we call self-placement. Mm -hmm. I would like to bring our minds back to before 2017. Mm -hmm. We were waiting till November and December for students to go to school because the old system that was running, after the first run, they will put the students back in and run again. Then they will put the students back in and run again and keep running and keep running and keep running until they give student schools. Mm -hmm. But this new system, what we do is that the students that are unable to be placed based on their choices, you open up the rest of the vacancies because the vacancies are available for them anyway. And so once you open up the vacancies, then you put them into a system called self-placement where they, the same place they checked their, whether or not they have a school, they can click a self-placement uh, button and then go through the self-placement process. Mm. That is the 122,000. 706. So this is basically our placement data report. But what I also wanted to put out there, just so we understand, is that this year, some almost 17,000 schools or uh, JHS, junior high schools, presented students for a BCE. Out of them, 10,635, representing 63%, came from public schools or were public schools. And 6,289, representing 37%, are private schools. But if you look at the total number of students that were presented, of the 512,083, 
388,374, about almost 76%, 75.8% are public school candidates. And then the other 24.2% or 123,709 are private school candidates. Then on, on, on the other side of the screen, what I did is I went into our system as at the start of the show. And this was our data. Green track students that have been placed both through auto placement and self placement up to now is 153,950. Gold track, 144,335. Then, of course, double track schools only make up 395 of the 721 schools. So we still have over 300 single track schools. And the single track schools have 129,158 in their schools place. So a total of 427,743 mm. have schools. How, how have you allocated the protocol admissions? Now, that, that is the next thing down. We've been hearing about protocol, protocol, protocol. Protocol for category A and B schools. Because we have category A's, category B's, and category C schools. Protocols for Category A's and Category B schools are 10%. And protocols for Category C schools are 5%. Now, we also have what has been introduced by this government as the public equity um, placement. And this is to say that students that went to public junior high schools, out of the Category A schools, a percentage of 30% of the slots are presented or um, are reserved for students who went to public junior high schools. Now, this has always been there. There's been this confusion, but it has always been there. It was there as what was termed the catchment area protocol. All right. So this is a good overview. Yes. Now, people we speak to say, and from the independent school and other places, say number one, the arrangements you made for parents with grievances was completely poor. You had thousands of people standing in the sun. A few people collapsed. A government that is serious about placement should create an environment where people can come in if they have issues to be resolved. It looks like that was poorly handled, and that's why we saw the confusion at the Independence Square. What's your, what's your comment on that? Well, unfortunately, you know, when people collapse uh, standing in the sun, it is never pretty, regardless of who is at fault. And we, we would say that more needs to be done mm. in terms of providing water, providing shade, and things like that for people that are there. But what we would also like to put out there is that most of the people that are at the Independent Square need not be there. They need not be there? Yes, because they have a school. Where should they go? If you have a school, go to your school to enroll. But what if, for practical purposes, they can't go? If somebody says, I've been placed in a school, for example, I've been placed in a school... Sebi Sebi for deaf and dumb people, and yes. I'm not my, my, my child is not deaf. Mm -hmm. Or I've been given a day school that practically I can't send the child to because it's too far from where I live. Shouldn't those issues be issues that your center should resolve? Those are issues that our center should resolve. And I'll tell you that in terms of placement into special schools, deaf and dumb, it is probably not even a um, handful. You could probably count them on your two, two hands in terms of students that accidentally may have been put in a deaf and dumb school or mm -hmm. uh, blind school. And this is why. Because those schools are held from placement. Those spaces are held from placement. So when we run the placement system, those spaces are not available. The only people that those spaces are available to are from schools that are either supporting deaf and dumb or blind students. And they specifically bring their information to the Ghana Education Service. We process that information. We give it to our CSSPS Division, um, CSSPS unit, and then they go ahead and do manual placement after this. So those cases are really few. The people that will say that have been put in a school that is far away, what we always say is that, or what we do know, is that they chose those schools. I can say on authority that nobody has been placed in a school that they didn't choose. And I believe that the general public as well as our parents need to begin to really put the truth out there. Because when they come to the Independent Square, what they will tell reporters, what they will tell our staff, is that they gave me a school I didn't choose. But when we go into the system and we look at all of the log files, they went in okay. and did self place We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll go into the log files. I'll also take you to Infantifim School, where parents actually did turn up. Mm -hmm. 
after self-placement and were asked to go back home. How does he respond? This is the point of view. We're trying to unravel the mess in the CSSPS with KB Tando. is the deputy DG at GES in charge of access and quality. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Point of View. Tonight we're trying to unravel the confusion some parents are facing in placing their awards in secondary schools. And earlier on, I went to Independence Square. I had Zoe Abu Beidu and Nanatu Forbatin's report. Later on, I'll go back there to show you what else transpired. My guest is KB Tando. He is the Deputy Director General of Ghana Education Service in charge of access and quality. So before I take you to Phantom School to show you what happened, there appears to be, you're saying there's a lot of... Um, interest in category A schools. Yes. Show, give me a quick sense of the demand for these schools versus the spaces available. Thank if you. If you have numbers to show this. Yes. Um, and uh, as we can see on our screen, we've, we've selected a few category A schools and some high demand schools to, to demonstrate this. Uh, this year, for Wesley girls, especially for people with daughters who want to go to Wesley girls, if you look on the screen, you, you would see that Wesley Girls only had space for 510 students total. That is in wow. all programs, mm -hmm. 510 students. Now, the number of students in terms of our total choice files who said they would like to go to Wesley Girls were 4,990. Mm. So if you really look at it, then the people that chose Wesley Girls, only 10.22% can gain access into Wesley Girls based on merit. So all those students will have to move to their second choice if they chose this. Same with Holy Child. Uh, 476 spaces, 5,536. 4,536. Sorry, 4,536. So 10%. 10%. In Fancy Pim, 4,804 spaces are 1,021. That is 21.25%. So 4,800 students wanted to go to Fancy Pim school. Yes. Wow. Premier College, your former school. My, for, 9, my former school. Five. And the spaces available was five, uh, 1,530, so only 15.76%. Let's look at Achimota, because here in Accra, we talk a lot about Achimota. They declared 1,190 spaces. Mm -hmm. Now look at the number of people. 18,778 wow. said they want to go to Achimota. Now let me, let me jump you to your own school, Presec. Mm. Um, 1,122 spaces were available in all programs. Mm -hmm. But the number of students who wanted to go there was almost 7,000. 6,948 people wow. said they wanted to go. So you, you begin to see the, the fact that a few high demand schools are, uh, are taking the attention of everybody, even though we have space available. I just, I just brought a few other schools so you can see. Wow. Agri Memorial, Ghana National, they tend to be second choice schools for a lot of people. Now look at agreement. So second choice schools have more people because you add first and second choice. Second choice. So if you look at that, you see 22,586 people said they wanted to go to Agri Memorial. The spaces available are 800. If you take the same with Ghana National, 35,501 spaces are 850. Then the most highly demand school based on all of the choices. Kumasi Secondary Technical School in Patasi. Wow. 37,457. That's the total choices. Mm. But their spaces are only 1,214. So you can only place 3.24%. Yes, please. So if you look at some of this, you begin to see the gravity. But I also wanted to... But, but this, this is a false picture in a sense that some of the numbers are first and second and third choice. Yes, this is, that's why we're because saying Because in your original slide, choices. you were saying that if you look at the number of spaces available, yes. there's more space than the number of students available. Yes. So even though this looks serious, it just exacerbates people's dissatisfaction with the schools they got. But it doesn't mean that there's no school for them. Yes. But another issue is that how come so many people are dissatisfied with the schools they've been given? Because if all these people at Independence Square are saying that they've not been properly placed or the school they get, they don't like it. What's going on? Is it that you didn't communicate properly or they didn't understand the process? What's that? What? I, I think that there, there is also some, some cultural nuances to this. For a lot of us, you and I sitting on here, we always brag about our alma maters. We talk about Presec, we talk about Premper College. And of course, if you, those are the schools that everybody tend to talk about. 
And so some of the quiet but very good schools, people tend to gloss over. And so it is, it is a combination of a more education for, for the public in terms of even choice patterns. You know, what we have always advised people is that, you know, you may choose your first choice as a, as a rich school, a school that is difficult to reach, but you want to still try. But as you go down your choices, choose a school you are comfortable with, but you are competitive in. Everybody knows their own uh, ability. And so if I know that I'm going to be competitive in Premper College, I would choose it. If I think that Premper College is a school I would like to go to, and, but it's far reaching, but I still want to try, I'll choose it. And then maybe my second or third choice school, I'll choose a school that I know that based on my academic performance all throughout junior high school, I am very competitive and will get a choice. But unfortunately, what happens is that people follow a particular choice pattern and the spaces are not available. So some people with aggregate nine will follow a particular choice pattern and unfortunately they will use their fifth choice school also as a grade Okay, eight. so show me the back end because uh, there are a couple of issues with this platform. For example, I'm told you have two websites. Yes. So you have one which ends with .gov.gh. Yes. The other with .org. Yes. Why are you running two websites? Typically what you would do is to run one as a mirror of the other. Mm -hmm. So why are they, are, they, are, they are actually a mirror of each other. So those sites... Oh, no, actually what I mean is a link. So for yes. example, we have citynewsroom.com, CTFM online. When we're migrating, mm -hmm. when you click on City News, CTFM online, it, points you it to takes you to citynewsroom.com. But yes. you haven't done that. This is what, that's what we are doing. So these two sites are concurrent. But what we do, especially if you speak to the IT people, the, there is something that is called load balancing. You know, if you have a situation where 500,000 people are going to go onto a site you know, within a particular short period of time uh, to be able to access, you need to be able to balance the load. Last year, we did hear of this, some of these same issues where systems were crashing. Two years ago, we heard of issues... But this year, with, systems also crashed know, as well. Yes, but this year, we have every evidence to believe that there, there was some sabotage in terms of people trying to penetrate the system. And that is what even... Sabotage? Led, yes. Somebody... What do you mean? In terms of people who didn't want the system to work. And so, you know, there, there, there were cyber issues happening where people were trying to enter the system. From and, home or abroad? Um, home and abroad. You know, is uh, that not a lame excuse? It, it is not a lame excuse. We because do, usually there are things you do to protect sites which you know have heavy traffic. Yes. You, for example, create multiple servers. There, there, are, there, are mul there are multiple servers. We are operating in a cloud. We have five firewalls, but that doesn't mean that people will not get in. Even the CIA sometimes is hacked. Now, my information is that your .gov.gh yes. had many more people going there than the .org. Yes, and that is because that has been the running website for a long time. And so a lot of people know that website. And So you, you know, couldn't manage the load well. If you had initially wanted to spread the load, the .gov.gh had probably 90% of the load, and the .org had... Less than 10% of the load. Yes, but... So then they plan to have two websites to manage the traffic. Initially, it didn't really make sense. It, it did make sense because some of the people that went to the .gov.gh will be, will, will be redirected based on load. And so it's, 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 it's you know, these are technical issues. I, 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 I teach sociology and I do uh, education management. But in terms of the technology, if you want to do load balancing... These are some of the strategies that you So is it, is it not that p your site couldn't cope with the new instructions? Because I'm told you also changed the software. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been using the software since 2005, and then this year you changed it. That is untrue. When did you change this, the software? This, this is our third software. So it's not as though it was just changed. Mm -hmm. The first software was brought in in 2005. Mm -hmm. In 2009, there was a change mm -hmm. in that software. And then from 2009 to 2017, that software was in operation. We had challenges with the software, clear, very, very uh, serious challenges with those softwares. Just like I was, I was telling you, people were running second and third and fourth time before they could go to school in December. And from 2016 or 2017, we started to look at how can we get people to school early because they were losing time. And one of the things we had to do was to look at, you know, what other options are available. You know, and it is, it is nothing new. Um, I, I know that right now in terms of the softwares you are running, if better softwares become available, you will do so a migration. So this software that you are running, yes. did, is it the same thing you ran last year? This is not the same software so, we ran last year. So this year, yes. there's a new software. Yes. So how do you say that that could not be part of the problem? It is not part of the problem because last year we also 
had uh, major challenges. But last year, didn't have people of this number, the independent Yes, we spread. did. I think that really? we... Really? The same that, number of people? I think that Same we have, level of chaos? I think that we have short memories in this Is country it? sometimes. Then you, should be, then you should be apologizing. If, yeah, we if, have, for, two we years, have, if mm -hmm. for two years of your administering of this, you're actually claiming here that this is not the first time this is being this chaotic. Yes. You should rather be saying sorry to the people of Ghana. And we have. Not saying that, know. well, because it happened last year and it's happening this year, means that this is normal. This I can't think, be normal. You know, and I want to talk to the Ghanaian people. <laughs> we have spent a lot of uh, time uh, really uh, trying to, to get our message out. And we would like to apologize to, to the Ghanaian people uh, that we have a, a challenge of this nature. But we would also like... Uh, to let the realities uh, be, be out there. The reality is that most of the people at the Independent Square will plead with them not to be there because you already have a school. Now, if you have genuine challenges, we have a, a, um, we have a call center, and the call center has a lot of people at the back end that are receiving calls. And I would like to put the number out. That is 030-700-7777. Again, that number is 030 Seven zero zero seven 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 seven, and we'll be able to listen to your concerns. We'll be able to um, find ways to address those concerns, mm. and 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 we've made we've made effort to try to help everybody. We have done well in putting people in school. If how, we go, how, how long did you test this new? And I sorry, I'm going back to the site because yes. I feel if people's access to the site is not working, that's when they will move outside and start doing all the crazy things that we're seeing. Did you, how long did you get to test this system? Ben, I, system? I, you really, I don't want the conversation to be as though the site is not working. That is why I the put it The site is up. working, but that you didn't why, admit that there, the, were, there were days that it was down. Of course, we had, we, and we put it down ourselves when we, we realized that a certain part of, of, uh, of our interface, especially around the self-placement, mm -hmm. there was a possibility of compromise. And in order to protect the integrity of the placement system, we needed to ensure that wherever there was effort to try to compromise the system, that we address it. I have put it up here for everybody to see that this site is live. If I go up, so this, this is live. This is live data. But this is the back end, right? This is the this is the back end. This is what shows you what is happening in the whole population. Of yes. Now, Bernard, if you see the numbers I have put up there, yes. it is very similar to the numbers that I I, I showed, I showed the, earlier, the where the total is twenty seven or oh, four hundred twenty seven thousand um, for uh, seven hundred and forty nine. What I showed was even seven hundred and forty three. Now, if I refresh that site. Uh, you have to put your details I, I have to go All back right. because so, we've yeah, been off for some time. you do that, yes. So mm. what, what it does that, I have quite a number of questions that have been asked. I'm going to read them. And uh, if you have a specific question, please let me know. I will take them straight to him. And I'm also going to take you to Infantime School because there was a very troubling video from there where parents said they had sent their kids and they uh, were turned away. So we're trying to bring you live um, situation on the... Uh, Ministry of Education, GES portal for Fine. school placement. Your internet will work very, very shortly. <laughs> and, and whilst you're doing this, let me read a few comments for you because I think there's quite a lot of people who are not happy. Uh, Prince Henry Kofredia says, it's time we reoriented our mentality over choosing big schools before we could reach the heights we want to attain in life. We need to revisit the old system of choosing SHS schools after JSS over the new CSSPS system to avoid all this chaos and misunderstanding we are seeing. Let's think about uh, our future leaders before our political gains. Mm. But I think the main solution to this CSSPS issue is to extend the number of months that children spend at home before going to SHS. <laughs> uh, re rest in peace to the tidy girls by the Saribidi Ako from West Fija in Takrade. Government upon government keep failing and disappointing. Simple SHS placement is not a problem. Ghana is bleeding. Munio. You don't add your name. Uh, Clement from Lakeside Estate. Good evening, Bernard. 21st century Ghana and just look at what's happening at the Black Star Square. This is sad. Pupils collapsing, parents frustrated with GS confused. The CID boss, National Security Minister, and the Interior Minister must also resign on the Takwadi Girls issue. Uh, this is from uh, Lomote uh, Baba Yara in Ashali Botre, St. Peter's. Bernard, greetings to you and your guest, the Deputy Director. Please ask him if he had his word go through this chaotic process. Would he, what, what would he feel as a parent? I don't think his words are that age yet. <laughs> uh, why can't they tackle the issue according to the green and gold tracks? If they are serious about the education of kids, I believe they would have resolved it by now. They should stop playing political games with the education of our kids. Is their site backup? Yes, the site is backup. And what I wanted to show is when I began, when, when I began my presentation, 
we had 427,743 people who had been placed. Been placed because self-placement is still going. And um, some 40 minutes into the show, we have added... Um, it's more people have gone to do so self placement. 27, 787. Yes, so another 40, 40 something people, have, people placed have placed themselves in the past 40 minutes. So they, this is and this is live data. Before the end of the show, I can refresh again for you to see. How does the self placement work? Now, when you go into the self placement, can, can you minimize this whilst you're this? Yes. I want you to show me the graph. So yes. What is the pie chart showing? This pie chart is showing the placement percentages. So the green track, in terms of the numbers of students that have been placed. 36% are on the green track, 34% mm -hmm. are on the gold track, and 30% of our students we have placed so far are in single Can track schools. Can you give me a single tra track school, an example of a single track school? Yes. Um, so schools that don't have to divide the school students into two? Yes. Yes. All right. Go. Can you re again? I want to yes. see something. Mm -hmm. How come you have 427,000 placed, but only 96,000 enrolled, 98,000 enrolled? Because yes, yesterday was really the first day of reporting. And so the, this enrollment numbers is actually as the schools enter. Uh, because when a student is placed, mm. I have in fancy PIM, some mm. of them are on the gold track, some are on the green track. Now, today, students are beginning to go to school. Mm -hmm. Now, the schools, when the students come and they take all of their information, now goes into the back end of the system to enter the students' bio data. As the schools enter the students' bio data, this is up updated live. And so as of today, the schools have been able to enroll on the green track 64,743 who have reported to school. And as of today, even the gold track that is supposed to go to school in November some of the students are going to secure their spaces, and we have about 32,000 of such students who have gone to secure spaces. In the single track schools, same thing, the schools okay. are entering data. So this is some of the live data that we, we have available. This is still the point of view. Uh, I'll take another short break. When I come back, I'm going to um, read some of your comments, and I'm going to also bring you some reports from across the country in terms of schools and what is happening. Don't go away. Thank you. Welcome back to The Point of View. Today we're trying to understand what's happening with the school placement. My guest is KB Tandor, the Deputy DG in charge of access and quality. So earlier on, a video was sent to me from some parents whose ward had been uh, placed in Infantipim School and yet they were not being given a chance to, to enroll. Here's a quick excerpt. <laughs> Look at the emotional trauma you are taking the boys through. We need the, uh, the Minister of Education, but we need the President. The President, the President to love education very well. The, pre the President, the only thing he has done to appreciate you and Uganda is a free education. And we are one appreciated with the government. But this thing is going on, the President has not knowledge about it. We need a president here, now, so that he will tell us that he remove a friend from the system. Our address are better than what is doing on the platform. Oh, yeah. Whoever is go, behind us, be here. whoever is behind us, because you can see this not working. Yeah, this is the PM. Because you can see this not working. Because you can see this not working. Because you can see this not working. Papa, you can see this not working. Thank you. 
So those were very angry parents at Infantifim School who said that they had brought their awards who had been self-placed, but the school had a notice with a list of students who were supposed to enroll, and those names did not include those of the parents who we saw in the video. So what's going on there? How come some parents had done self-placement yet the school was not ready or aware? Well, um, Bernard, I, number one, it is really disheartening, you know, to see... Uh, parents as well as students uh, go through uh, this type of an experience. It is, mm. um, it is unfortunate, and it is, uh, um, it is something that we apologize that parents had to go through it. However, those parents and those students went through the self-placement before we had announced that we needed to take down that system, and then we needed to correct certain errors. And that's what I was trying to um, discuss with you where there were efforts to um, use foul means to get people into schools. When that people was, tried to hack in? Yes. When that was detected, wow. and that's why I was talking earlier about the integrity of the placement process. When that was detected, we took down the self-placement portal mm. on, 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 on the evening of Monday. Then on Tuesday, we put out a press statement, letting people know that that site is down, while we fix certain issues that have been detected. Then on Thursday morning, that site was brought up after we had been able to see what was really happening. Now at that point, what we had to do was to annul self-placement because there was foul means to try to get people into schools. And at that point, we put out a press statement, okay. which we apologized uh, to um, the the Ghanaian people, and to the affected parents and students. And then we asked that anybody who self-placed between the 9th and the 11th of September should go back and recheck because we needed to ensure that the integrity of the placement process was, was intact. When that happened, I can bet, just like you said, I can bet you know, on it that most, if not all, of the people who went and didn't find their names on the list or in the system were the people who were put into the system between the 9th and the 11th. And we needed so to So is it that, that somebody is illegally putting them in? There was an attempt, external attempt. And that is why I said that we had to put down the self-placement system to try to address that in order to, to, to protect wow. the integrity of the placement process. Because if we had not done that, then the word will go out there that my children are able to get in from foul means. But these and, people standing there yes. don't look like people who can hack into a computer system. It's not them. So who's putting them in? Because self placement by definition, is we placing ourselves. Yes, but if someone is trying to attempt to enter the, the system with foul means, it's not necessarily these parents. I do not believe that any of these parents will, will do anything illegal. Wow. I, you know. Take me back to Zoe. I just want to quick bring you a quick final thing because there was a lot of different things happening at the Independence Square today. So yes. take me back to Zoe briefly before I come into a wrap-up. I'll read some comments as well. Mm -hmm. Away from Bunkrugu, Yoyo. Now his brother has been sent to the Ashanti or has been offered a school in the Ashanti region and will be going through um, the list that he has here to see what the, really the issues are. Thank you for joining us, Emmanuel. Thank you very much. Uh, when, when did you get to Accra? I got to Accra yesterday. Um, even Friday I was here, I couldn't get any proper attention. Yesterday I arrived again and this morning we are still struggling to get Andrews registered um, to change his school. I mean, he is given Amdia Senior High in Kumasi Tafo. Okay. And this is a 16 year old boy from Gungbane. Gungbane is in Yuyo, Yuyo Nasuan district. Mm. And then um, we don't understand why the guy never chose this school and he was given the school. He had aggregate 16. He is also 16 years. He's given a day school in Amadea Senior High in Kumasi Tafo. We are not actually happy that a boy of 16 years has been sent to Ashanti Region Tafo to go and school. Whom does he know there? 
But uh, How the, the thing school? is that he's a day student. He's he's a, a, a day student. That is even the more horrible situation we are talking about. We need him to be changed to Northern Region. We are pleading for, for, for I mean, authority to, to, to send him back to the Northern Region where his, his parents can easily attend to. He chose Bunkurugu Senior High. Okay, so he chose Bunkurugu Senior Technical oh, School. Oh, oh, okay. And he, never give, he was never given Bunkurugu Senior High School. Tamale Islamic is, is supposed to be part of this, but it, it was never captured. Okay, so now, for Nobu that Senior one... High is supposed to be part of this, it was never captured. Mm. That is why Bunkurugu is there. Only Bunkurugu they were able to capture. Send the guy to Bunkurugu also, because the guy come from Bunkurugu, you are sending him to Kumasi, 16 year old boy, to be in Kumasi and do what? Okay, so general arts boarding at TIA Madia. Now, Uthmania Senior High School in Tafo, General Science Day. A Greek in Zima Senior High School is in Kumasi. He had General Science Day. A San Gregoire Senior High School, uh, High and Technical School, General Science Boarding. Hmm. Now, the last choice is Bunkurugu Senior yes. High School. He, 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 the program is agriculture and it's still a day status. Yes. And you're saying he, he didn't choose any of these. Schools. Except Bunkurugu that I know. And, and, and he's. Bunkurugu, we are, we are aware because we gave him the list and Bunkurugu was part of the list. But this one, no. And he's given his second choice on the list. And that second choice is the choice of GES, not the boy of ours. How is that possible? It, it is possible because many of them are complaining even here in this independent square. We need to get uh, GES representatives here. So that you set up a canopy, that anybody that will come can be able to know that, oh, with my problem, this is the destination I'm supposed to go. But look, with all intelligence and indulgence, look at where you put your everything at. And you are expecting people to pass to, through this queue to the top. This is their B, I mean, JSS time, and look at the way they are suffering. Then I'm, I'm, I'm at the University of Ghana. You understand? So this is bad. We want the government of Ghana, Nana Akufuado, if you talk to Matthew Poku Prempe, for him to know that the way they are structuring the education system is bad. Yeah, uh, my brother has been sent all over the place. So those were a couple. The Bumprugo yes. guy who says the only school he knows the award chose was the last choice. How do you explain that? Well, it, it is a choice that they made. There is no way that we will change someone's choice. And so it is something that his son, maybe he spoke to his son, it is, it is rather unfortunate, by the way, and I, I want to first address that. There was no need for this fine gentleman to travel all the way from the north to Accra because we have solution centers in each of the regions, and it is widely advertised. Some people say when they go, they don't hear anything, so they come to Accra. Some of the people who interview say when they go there, they don't, they don't tell them anything. It is, it, is, it, it, is, it is rather unfortunate that that is how um, they, they would feel, and I apologize if this is how they will feel. But what... I would say is even when you come to our solution, because uh, the independent square is also a solution center. When you come to the solution center, for the most part, your issues are not resolved immediately. You come to bring your issues, and it is resolved within about 24 to 48 hours. And that is why we also put out, even in our press conference on the, on the 5th of September, when we were announcing that placements were going to be ready on the 8th of September, we put in our press conference that phone number that I put out. Okay, so let's be clear. So let's yes. assume even this boy from Bumpuru did choose the Ahmadiyya Day School. Yes, which... But which now I, the parents realize that they can't have him as a day student in Kumasi. And, they and want therefore they prefer home. a school in this region. Yes. What's the, how do you resolve it? It's this, this fine gentleman should have just gone to the resolution center in the northern region where he resides. He gives his son's information. My son was given... I'm a dear day in Ashanti region. My son cannot go. It was a choice he made, but he cannot go because his day, I don't know anybody there. So I would like him to be brought to a day school close to my home. Within 48 hours, that is resolved. Today, I personally, because I have access to the system, I have resolved almost 80 issues like that. Wow. You know, so, and, but it is not on the spot at the independent center. So what we are asking people is that if you have issues, call uh, our, so, uh, our call center. We'll take the information, and then we would resolve it and then communicate back Let to you. Let me end with a comment from Dr. Smith. Bernard, what your guest is saying is not true. He should speak to the facts. My son at seven and wanted to read science. Yes. None of the schools we chose was selected for him. Mm -hmm. I got frustrated and had to send him to a private school. Please tell him to send us, us his index number, and we'll check live right now. Dr. Smith, we have run out of time, but you can send me your index number. And I'll send it to uh, Dr. Tando. And hopefully on the breakfast show tomorrow or later on in the week, we'll see if we can get him a school. Yes. We have to say thank you for your time. 
And for those of you who've been commenting on the Takradi girls as well, um, a, quick, a few quick comments. Bernard, the outcome of the DNA on the missing girls should be jointly announced by both police and a team of medical experts who worked on the outcome. It's important that police know which specific spectrum and methods were used to arrive at the results. This is the right time for the public and the families to be given all relevant explanations and information. My name is Ben Avle. We've been talking about the SHS placement. Earlier on, we gave you a quick update on the four missing Takradi girls. The police have confirmed that the DNA test proved positive and that all four of the girls are no longer alive. Sincere condolences to the family. And commiserations to all of you who are still trying to place your word. The good news is that there are enough schools and enough spaces for everybody. If we give ourselves a few days, things will be done. Thank you for being on the show. My name is Bernard Avila. Thank you very much for watching The Point of View. Thank you, Good Bernard. Good night. Point of View is brought to you in association with Stambic Bank. Moving forward. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on City TV's YouTube channel. Subscribe for more videos on The Point of View. My name is Bernard Avale. Thank you.